So a most unlikely Duke just went on sale a couple of days ago and I'm absolutely thrilled by how well it seems to be doing, all the positive reviews and responses I've been getting from readers. Um, so today I've decided that I'm going to read a little bit for you from the book. I've picked um, a section from the chapter two where Gabriella meets Rafe for the first time. She's just been on an outing in the park with Fielding, who's this perfect aristocrat, according to her parents. Not so much according to Gabriella. She's not very keen on Fielding at all, but she's willing to do what her parents want her to do and save the family's reputation by marrying uh, this man. Um, except then she runs into Rafe. So here's a little bit from their first encounter with each other from Here's the book, Most Unlikely Duke. As far as Gabriella could tell, none of the newcomers appeared to be the least bit bothered by Fielding's arrival, though Pearson did seem uncharacteristically flustered. Curiously, it looked as though he didn't know how to respond to the argument that was presently brewing between the scruffy-looking man and Fielding, and they were arguing, or at least the man was, Indeed, he'd pushed the girls behind him and stepped toward Fielding, confronting him with his much larger size while Pearson stood to one side with a perplexed look on his face, which was when Gabriella decided that she simply had to interfere. Clearly, the servant lacked manners, while Fielding would likely get himself hurt. So she hoisted herself down, smoothed her skirts so she looked presentable, pasted her practice society smile on her face, and strolled forward, realizing, belatedly, that she'd made a tactical error as soon as she met the gaze of the man with whom Fielding was quarrelling. He must have sensed her approach, for his eyes flicked to hers with unashamed interest. A second passed, but it was enough, enough for Gabriella's footsteps to falter beneath the perusal of those dark, unyielding eyes. His appearance was rough and rugged, his hair a mass of stray locks just begging to be tamed, while his mouth... Gabriella swallowed, determined not to let her momentary slip in composure show. He was not of a social class, and yet, with one look, he'd sent her heat rushing to her cheeks. It was a reaction unlike any she'd ever experienced before, and in that moment she hated how weak and susceptible she was to the pleasure of this man's forthright admiration, for it was surely the sort of feeling that had led her sister astray. His mouth curved with the sort of confidence that could only be owned by those who cared very little about the opinion of others, and as he turned back to Fielding, Gabriella realized that the man had assessed her, found her wanting, and promptly dismissed her. You're all the same, he told Fielding, making assumptions. Pearson sputtered as if in protest. You... I beg your pardon, sir, Fielding said, but are you telling me that you are not hired help? He punctuated the question with a glare that made Gabriella cringe. My lord, Pearson managed, as though choking on breadcrumbs, this is... Nobody of consequence, the man finished. Fielding held his ground. Have some respect, man. Pearson is a butler, above you in every conceivable way and hardly deserving of being interrupted by the likes of you. Is that so? The scruffy man asked, as he took a step closer. My apologies, Gabriella said, deciding to act before the man, whoever he might be, decided that this piece of pavement was somehow worth fighting over. My friend here merely wished to discover if the next Duke of Huntley has been found since it does appear as though Pearson is hiring new servants. We could think of no other reason, and were simply curious to know who he might be and when we might have a chance of making his acquaintance. She'd caught his attention again, and not without some degree of discomfort. She was a lady, after all, and Fielding was an earl. How could this man possibly find them wanting? And yet, the evidence that he did was plain to see in his critical expression. For the longest moment, the man simply stood there staring at her while the two young girls, women really, peeked out from behind him with narrowed eyes. Dressed in a plain white shirt, brown trousers and a jacket to match, he wore no hat, waistcoat or cravat. Gabriella watched in fascination as he swallowed, a movement so subtle and yet so utterly perfect. Madam? Her eyes shot to his the indignation of realising that her perusal had been observed flipping her stomach inside out and setting her off balance. The feeling was swiftly followed by no small degree of irritation. My lady, if you please, she told him tartly. Tipping her nose up a little, she did her best to feign unaffected aloofness. 
To her consternation, he reached out, snatched up her hand and bowed over it, brushing her glove with his lips. And yet, in spite of the barrier between them, she felt the heat of that kiss all the way to the depth of her soul. Ridiculous! She straightened her back and prepared to give the presumptuous man a piece of her mind just as Fielding jumped in, pushing the man away from her while Pearson made an odd sound of protest. How dare you take such liberties, Fielding demanded. The other man raised an eyebrow. I wasn't aware that I was doing any such thing. And then he shrugged before turning about and addressing Fielding and his two companions, who stood wide-eyed and gaping. Shall we go inside, then? Yes, Pearson exclaimed, already leading the way up the front steps while the three raggedly clad individuals paraded after him. Well, I never, Fielding muttered, looking rather as if he might stomp his foot in protest at any moment. Gabriella paid him no mind. She watched until the front door of Huntley House closed behind them, more curious than ever about what had just transpired. So grab your copy today. It's a thrilling read and have a wonderful day. I look forward to hearing from you. Stop by my website at www.sophiebarnes.com. Take care.